Welcome back to another production of Judah Forever YTV. Today we're going to look at this book, one of the books I'll be using for my uh, up and coming book called African Americans Crucified Christ. And I just want to show you some brief little statements from this book. Uh, this book was published in 1999, we're now in 2019. It was a bestseller when it first came out, but now it's obscure. And I remember in my last video I told you that uh, it was in 2010, you can Google this as well, Pope Benedict uh, said that the Jews are not responsible for the murder crucifixion of Christ. So if the Jews didn't, these Jews didn't do it, then the question is who did? That's why I'm writing my book, Guilty, African Americans Crucified Christ. So this book, um, you can see a little brief statement right here. The Jews of Khazari counts the eventful history of the kingdom of Khazaria, which was located in Eastern Europe, not in Africa or, or, or Israel or Canaan, and flourished as an independent state from about 650 to 1016. In the 9th century, the Khazarian royalty and nobility, as well as a significant portion of the Khazarian population, embraced, embraced the Jewish religion. They converted to Judaism. And the recommendations from this book, as you can see in the back, if you can ever take a brief look online, you can see the people who uh, recommended uh, Professor of Modern Jewish History, that's J.D. Clear, University College in London, and um, Peter B. Golden, Professor of History in Rutgers University, and they talk about the Khazar conversion. Khazar conversion. That's what this book is about. Now, let me read to you a small little um, thing I read in the beginning. I found this was very, very interesting about the origins of these Khazarian people. Uh, it says here, the Khazarian, the Khazars were predominantly Turkic. And it goes on to explain some of that. Now, according to Turkic legend, as preserved in Chinese chronicles, the original Turks lived beside a large swamp. Enemies killed them off, with the exception of one boy, whose feet they cut off, and whom they threw into a marsh. The boy was rescued by a female wolf. Rescued by a female wolf. Sounds familiar? Years later, the boy impregnated the wolf. When the leader of his enemies hired someone to kill the boy, the boy and the wolf fled to a cave into a mountain north of the Turfan Depression in eastern Turkestan, which today is northwest China. So the Chinese people know about the origins of these people. The wolf gave birth to ten sons in the cave. One of the ten sons was named Ashishna, and his tribe became powerful and greatly expanded in size. Aha. Uh -huh. All ten sons settled along the southern slope of the Altiai Mountains, came under the control of the Duanjuan, and became blacksmiths. The Ashishna, that's the tribe, Ashishna adopted the name Turk. The legend indicates that the wolf is the totem ancestor of the Turks. The wolf is the totem ancestor of the Turks. You can stop the video and read that statement anytime you want. Now, remember the movie Alpha? I wrote this in my notes right here, Alpha. This little paragraph is what that two-hour movie is about. Approximately two-hour movie is about. Talking about the origins of Eastern Europeans. Sick and sad yet true. The Jews of today in Israel are not Israelites. They are Khazars. And when you scroll through the origins of the history in the book of Genesis, uh, from chapter 9 and 10, it gives you their origins. They came from the sons of Japheth, which is the first son of Noah. And the reason why they live in Israel today is because Noah prophesied it. God shall enlarge Japheth. And that's what the name Japheth means, you know, an enlarging of people. And he shall dwell or live in the tents, the territory, the home of Shem, Shem, the Shemites, Shemitic people, and Canaan, the Africans, shall be his servant. Canaan is the father of the African people. So Noah prophesied this, and you can read this Genesis chapter 9, story of Noah drunkenness. Chapter 10 goes into the genealogy. Japheth, father of Gomer, and Gomer, okay, the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. That's what these people are, Ashkenazi Jew. This is Genesis chapter 10 in your Bible. Now, when we get down to Revelation, Christ tells you very plainly 
that these people are not Jews. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 and chapter 3 verse 9. Let's look at that quickly where Christ said to his people, I know your works and tribulation and your poverty. Okay, this is talking about, look at the description. Hard work, tribulation, poverty. Who's the only people that's going through those exact same things for, for over the fi last 500 years? This is revelation we're living in, right? But you are rich, spiritually rich. You are the most religious people in the world, spiritually. And I know the blaspheme of them which say they are Jews. I know the blasphemy. This is blasphemy for them who say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. These people are Satan worshippers. They are not true Jews. They are liars. They are fake, pretending to be Jews. This book tells you the origin. Thank you, Kevin Allen Brook. Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. Christ repeats it again. Behold, I, know, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. They are liars. Behold, I'll make them to come and worship. Come and worship before your feet. And to know that I have loved you. So African Americans, remember this. Christ loves you. And he's going to pay you back. Those of you who repent. Those of you who are living under the curses right now. Guess what? Obedience to the commandments reverses any curse. Obedience to the Ten Commandments primarily re reverses every and any curse. So repent. Obey. God's Ten Commandments found in Exodus chapter 20. And this is what's going to happen to you. This is going to be your final end. These fake people. The truth is going to come out. And everything will be flipped upside down. This. May, may, may Yahweh bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. Until next time, see you again.